Hey you, welcome back to the channel. Check out this cool shirt that I found. This just came in the mail a couple of days ago. I gotta tell you, I've been taking a lot of film, film pictures, like film photography with actual 35 millimeter film. And it has been one of the greatest joys taking pictures again on film cameras. I got a couple of roles developed. I gotta show you guys. This week, I wanna go over another topic that I think there's some information out there, but it's always bothered me how people look at using reference images in their color grading work. So that's what we're gonna go over this week. Now, these are just tips that I've found useful in my own work and in my own color grading. And hopefully you can apply these tips when someone comes to you and maybe you get a little stuck when they wanna use a certain reference for color grading as well. Now you may draw different conclusions or you may have a different system, which is totally fine. These are just my opinions and the things that I found useful to me. Now, full disclosure, I use references all the time in my color grading work. I like to get inspiration from all sorts of different sources, but rarely do I ever find myself copying a grade because that usually doesn't translate very well. And I'll go into more detail during this video as well. All right, now these are the things that I've found to be the most useful when talking about references. Number one, know how to maximize what you're getting from a reference. Number two, know how to steer the conversation in order to get better information about the references that you do want to use. And number three, know how to apply those takeaways to your own grading as you go along. All right, so first up, let's pull in some references. This first one that I have here is from Everything Everywhere All at Once. Great movie and there are some really great shots. Now it's important to know how a look came about and how they're using it in a movie, especially when you're using it as a reference. For example, a lot of productions make something called camera LUTs before they even film the show. That way they get it on the camera and they can light and build sets and stuff like that around how the final image is going to look or as close to it as possible. Sets, lighting, everything else is then set up to really play to these looks. A lot of other departments also lend a hand in the look of the movie. For example, production design, set design, all that kind of stuff really plays into how the final look comes about. That's a very important reason why you need to know what you want to get out of a look and also what the client is expecting from you as well. So for example, if we look at a still like this, what is it that we truly like about this look? Is it the contrast? Is it the colors? Is it the cool push into some of the shadows? Is it accentuating something that's already there by pushing cool into the shadows of the image and the warm into the highlights? What about the quality of the highlights? The golden orange look or amber look maybe? These are all things that you have to decide on first before you begin. Here's another reference from Blade Runner, for example. Same idea here. Is it the color wash that we like? Is it the contrast levels? Is it the hue of some of these colors that they're using in this shot that give it that sort of neon appearance? These are all different things people could be looking at, especially when they say, I want a grade that looks like that. If you don't take the time to narrow in specifically on what a client is looking at or what you're looking at in terms of borrowing from a look, then you could be wasting a lot of time going down rabbit holes that you don't need to be doing. For example, you could be trying to pull off your best film emulation look when really all they wanted was to kind of swing some of the colors into a certain hue. So key number two, I like to ask very open-ended questions when I first begin talking about a look and talk as little as possible and kind of just let the person elaborate on what they like about a particular look. If you need more detail on something or you feel like they're being vague, you can always ask more specific questions after to kind of try to get to the right place. This is important when getting started to make sure that you're on the same page before you actually start grading. Usually if I'm stuck, I'll ask them something like, how do they see their image looking based on what they like about a reference photo? A lot of time having them go through the process and trying to describe what they think both images should line up looking like, you can get a lot of information out of that. People tend to have a clearer idea of what they want when they're describing their own work. Not all the time, but in most situations that'll give you a good place to at least start. So now we come to the final step, which is knowing how to apply your takeaways to the grade that you're doing. First, as with any grade that you're doing, the human eye is actually a lot more sensitive to changes in exposure and contrast than they are with colors. So make sure you're at least starting with that foundation with every grade. Focus on getting that right first, even between scenes as well, and that'll make the whole project flow a lot smoother. The way that I do that is I usually start by building a look to my desired exposure and contrast levels. So that'll be my first pass. And then I try to match the shots to make sure that the transition from scene to scene is accurate. For example, these two images can have the same colors, but if the contrast is off going from shot to shot, it feels really jarring. So that will ensure that as you're going from shot to shot, your look remains consistent and you can sell the transitions through uniform contrast and exposure where it makes sense. 
in my experience, steer clear of trying to copy a grade 100% because usually what you're doing is trying to copy that grade onto one shot where it may work or you can get it at least close on the one, but then it has a very hard time translating over from shot to shot. That's why I always talk about building looks on a timeline wide level so that at least you have the same starting spot with all of your images. That's maybe a topic to cover for another video, but let me know if you're interested, especially building a look for a timeline level instead of each shot individually and trying to match them. Also, if you're enjoying this video or learning anything, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button as well. It really helps me out with the channel. But as I was saying, if you don't work in broad strokes to create a look for your whole project, chances are the one shot that you've graded will not translate very well to additional shots. Then you'll be wasting a lot of time and you're kind of be losing steam trying to fix every single one along the way instead of just focusing on doing minor tweaks as you pass through your whole grade. In my opinion, applying inspiration that you've gotten from reference shots is definitely the way to go and not trying to copy them exactly. So that was my philosophy and that's how I go about grading my own work as well. But let me give you just one additional tip as well. So using your reference mode in Resolve, wiping between references can actually be really helpful when you're color grading. You can bring in references, but like we talked about before, when you're matching from shot to shot, you can also grab a still of the shot you're grading and then use it as a reference wipe to your current shot. That way you can compare and see if you're on the right track after you've applied your overall look for a project. The cool thing about this method is that your scopes will also reflect the reference image. So that way you can use your scopes to confirm, for example, that one looks like it may be a little bit lower exposure than another one, something like that. So what I can do is I can just jump back in and bring that down a little bit, and now it looks a lot closer. You can also do the same thing with contrast. When you have them side by side, I usually like going to the waveform, for example, to make sure contrast looks similar between images. That's just to make sure my grade matches what my eyes are telling me. All right, that's where I'll leave it for this video. Just make sure that you're steering the conversation in the proper way and you're using references in a broad, general way in order to come up with a look instead of trying to apply it shot for shot every single time. That'll save you a lot of frustration and I think it'll usually point whoever you're working with or you're, even yourself as a filmmaker in the right direction. If you like this video or found it enjoyable, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button. Like I said, it really helps me out a lot as well in the channel and there's more filmmaking content on the way as well. Until next time though, go out there and create something. La revedere.